today we'll be discussing about uh, one major issue that is sexual issues in men with epilepsy and we have two presenters and one chairperson presenter first is uh, dr raju he is from nepal he is hod department of neurology grand international Med hospital and uh, he is also president nepal stroke association and is also the academic coordinator of nepalese academy of neurology that is nan and he is a principal in investigator for nepal for enrich af trial which is still ongoing trial so i'll not delay further and will request dr raju to please start his talk on sexual complications how when and please dr raju yes yes sir <clears throat> yes uh, you can you see my slides not yet not yet not yet yeah is it visible not yet no it's not visible can you i think uh, ravish yeah, it... uh, i think we can't see i think probably has to again log in maybe i mean you can just try editing and logging again i mean leaving okay. and logging in the... i have to log in again yeah probably you have to i mean log in again yeah you try pressing share content already there is login already hello yeah we can hear you yeah yeah but yeah now yeah. we are seeing something yeah yeah now we are able to see this uh... mm, no can you see yes can yeah i able to see go to slide show i think this is macbook i think yes i think it's visible now yes yeah thank you uh sorry for the delay uh, good evening greetings from nepal at the outset i would like to thank uh, professor asalata for this opportunity uh and to be part of this webinar and also thank uh, my moderator dr iman shoshoni uh, well, without delaying i will go into this particular topic which is very important uh, but 
a bit neglected and then we uh, do not uh, talk much about. So uh, I'll talk in the next 15 minutes about sexual dysfunction. In Especially I'll focus on men with epilepsy. Uh, the major thing I will emphasize is how common this is, why we need to know about this, and what are the important drugs which cause sexual dysfunction. So in the, uh, the, my flow of talk would be first describing what is sexual dysfunction, how common is this problem, and then why this, does this occur, especially for, I'll focus on endocrine dysfunction and HP axis, and what drugs are responsible, and I'll uh, finally touch a few words on uh, what's the role of epilepsy surgery to improve on sexual dysfunction. So when we talk about sexual dysfunction, it means it's a discontent or dissatisfaction with an, a, you know, with an emotional, physical aspect of sexuality. And uh, the problem, the words sexual dysfunction and sexual problems are uh, used interchangeably. So the, the various authors and various, research, uh, the, the various uh, researchers have used this interchangeably. They mean the same thing. But ICD classification, and then if you look at DSM-5, they uh, keep as a category of sexual dysfunction. And for this to, uh, for this, uh, to describe sexual dysfunction, the problem has to have for at least six months. But sexual problem is the common word and in common parlance, that is what we are using. And mostly it includes four major uh, domains, the sexual dis desire disorder, sexual arousal disorder, and orgasmic disorder, which are three of these are very common in, especially in males, and sexual pain disorders, in, uh, it's common in females. There are various tools used for assessment of sexual dysfunction, and uh, the, the commonly that is used in male is International Index of Erectile Function, and there are other uh, uh, tools which are used in various other researches. The, when you look at how common is this problem, various studies have shown that to be very common and they're frequently seen in epilepsy patients. And to the extent of, especially if you just look at men, it's uh, the various literature have described various, but uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, it was to the extent of, uh, in one of the studies by Calabro et al, it is to the extent of 63% versus 10% in normal population. Various studies have been done and the, the, from the 50s onwards and the 60s and 80s. If we look at much of these studies, they have uh, the, the prevalence of sexual dysfunction ranging from 30% to 70%. This is one of the landmark study, Veteran Administration Cooperative Study, which is a randomized controlled trial of four major drugs used and published in NEGM in 1985 where mainly the, the sexual dysfunction was looked in form of decreased libido and with various drugs it was varying from 11 percent to 22 percent mainly the barbiturates causing more of the decreased sexual dysfunction rather than the other drugs the recent studies done especially these are in the studies in europe they have also shown higher frequency of problems especially with the sexual orgasm, erectile dysfunction, and feeling of sexual deviance. Uh, but however, in these studies, there was no significant association of sexual problem with the seizure control and use of any of the anti-epileptic drugs. Similarly, by the same authors from uh, Europe, Norway, they have shown that there, they have, there is a high prevalence of sexual problems, especially in patients with refractory epilepsy, uh, when compared with the controls, it was to the extent of 63%, and especially the domains which were affected were the sexual desire, uh, one third of these people, and then erectile dysfunction was also seen around one third of the people, and orgasmic problem was seen in around 13%. So if we look overall, the, the problem of sexual dysfunction, especially in the males, Almost two thirds of the people are affected with sexual dysfunction, the persons which are affected with epilepsy and the domains which are affected were the hyposexuality, the orgasmic problems, and even in these patients, the fertility problems were also seen because of hypogonadism, because of increased prolactin in these individuals, and even the various uh, the studies have shown the reduced sperm quality in the individuals with epilepsy in patients with epilepsy. 
So if we look at this, what we, uh, what we understand is epilepsy is a complex uh, disease. And when there is an interaction of epilepsy and when we use anti-epileptic drugs, there is a lot of sexual hormonal changes which are brought about, especially with the use of the anti-epileptic drugs. And these particular individuals with epilepsy have a lot of psychosocial factors underlying. And because of the anti-epileptic drug, there is variation of neurotransmitter and all results uh, in sexual dysfunction. If we go individually, the epilepsy, because of the epileptiform discharges which are uh, produced, and especially the model of the temporal lobe epilepsy, if we, what is seen was the, the amygdala was activated and there is activation of amygdala hypothalamic pathway, which disrupts the normal pulsatile release of gonadotropin hormones and also it can involve the dopamine release. And because there is uh, the, the normal pulsatile release of GNRH is disturbed, that's why the patient can present with hypogonadism. And there is increased prolactin secretion because again, that is because of the disruption of normal pulsatile GNRH. And patient will present with various features of hyposexuality. And if you look at anti-epileptic drugs, mostly the enzyme inducing drugs, which enhance the cytochrome P450, they increase the formation of sexual hormone binding globulins and, and should, uh, resulting in decrease in the uh, availability of the active testosterone, which is around 2%. And so because it binds testosterone, binds with sex uh, hormone uh, binding globulin. So that's why the uh, available testosterone, free testosterone, testosterone, which is active, is decreased and resulting in hyposexuality. And the other, other path, uh, pathogenesis is because of the anti seizure medication, there is increase in the induction of the aromatase, which helps to uh, convert testosterone to the estradiol. And estradiol, in turn, inhibits the, uh, the luteinizing hormone secretion, and which in turn results in decreased tester testosterone, resulting in sexual dysfunction. There are other mechanisms which have been explained by various, um, I mean, with other various drugs, and uh, the, uh, the, this. Other medications also bring about different hormonal changes and bring about sexual dysfunction. And especially just to mention the carboni carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, especially the topiramate and jonisamide, they decrease the blood flow in the genitalia, resulting in the sexual dysfunction. This is just a chart trying to show the, the, the pathway which is activated, the amygdala hypothalamic pathway which is activated. And the corticomedial part of the uh, corticomedial part of uh, the amygdala, which is uh, if its corticomedial part is activated, uh, the uh, it uh, it pushes a positive feedback to the hypothalamus. It act activates the hypothalamus and basolateral inhibits the hypothalamus. So that's a uh, there. So there is a close balance of this activation and uh, inhibition, and that's how the the uh, the sexual dysfunction is brought about by whether there is activation or inhibition of different part of amygdala. So this is a chart just trying to show the the with the seizure there is an altered HPA act function and results in the, uh, the gonadotropin, the alteration of the gonadotropin hormones and increased prolactin hormone results in the hypogonadism. So it produces hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. And in other way, the anti-epileptic drug, because of the induction of, a, of the hepatic enzyme and because, because of the decreased testosterone, they bring about increase in the gonadotropin the release and they bring about hypogonadism, hyper, uh, the, the gonad gonadotropic hypogonadism. So these are two mechanisms which are closely playing a role in uh, the, uh, the bringing about the sexual dis dysfunction in the in uh, epileptic individuals. So this chart is just trying to show you the free testosterone is decreased with much of uh, many of these drugs that we are using, especially the commonly used drugs, the, 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 the carbamazepine and valproate and other drugs. Most of them they decrease the free testosterone. That's how why they bring about hypogonadism. And the other question that we need to answer is: Does the type of epilepsy really matters for sexual dysfunction? So various studies have been done, and the partial epilepsy has shown 
the these uh, shown cases of more of sexual dysfunction rather than the generalized epilepsy and especially the temporal lobe epilepsy this is just uh, the chart showing the various drugs and their uh, the, the various sexual dysfunction which they bring about. The carbamazepine brings about the decrease, diminished sexual desire, uh, and uh, valproate also brings about diminished sexual desire in around 50 to 60 percent. Similarly, erectile dysfunction is seen in carbamazepine and valproate both uh, to the extent of 50 to 60 percent and premature ejaculation is seen in to the extent of 35 to 50 percent. So what you can see is various uh, of these anti-epileptic drugs, especially the, the enzyme inducers like aromazepine and the, the, the valproate is, uh, they have the, the, uh, the, the function of sexual dysfunction which is brought about is almost uh, similar. But the newer drugs like oxcarbamazepine and lamotrigine, instead of like decreasing the sexual function, so whatever the because of the different mechanism of metabolism of oxcarbamazepine as compared to carbamazepine, there is improved sexual function brought about by when a patient uh, who develops uh, sexual dysfunction in carbamazepine, it changes to oxcarbamazepine. And similarly, it, we, when we use lamotrigine, there is uh, the, the, in cases of where uh, in epilepsy, uh, epileptic patients where there is a sexual dysfunction, when we use lamotrigine, there is improved sexual function. Um, now talking finally about the role of surgery in temporal lobe epilepsy and what is the, the, the after the temporal lobe epilepsy, various studies done in different time again have shown improvement of sexual dysfunction with, uh, uh, with temporal lobe epile epileptic surgery. And in, you know, this was more uh, uh, seen in temporal lobe uh, resection than extratemporal resection. And similarly, the study in uh, the Sri Chitra uh, also had shown the, the improvement yes, compared to the control in patients with temp after the temporal lobe uh, epileptic surgery, the sexual dysfunction was improved. So to conclude, the problem of sexual dysfunction is very common in these individuals with epilepsy to the extent of almost two thirds of the people are uh, the high sexual uh, the, uh, dysfunction. The problem is uh, because of direct eff effect of epilepsy and with the anti-seizure medications and added on to by the so psychosocial factors. Mostly the drugs which are enzyme inducers are the culprit of sexual dysfunction rather than the newer anti-seizure drugs. And any patient with epilepsy should be evaluated for sexual dysfunction and it is much of utmost important uh, in, while uh, evaluating a patient with epilepsy. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Dr. Raju. It was a very nice uh, talk and I think you have covered everything. So now I will request uh, our next speaker, Dr. Poonima Nambia. Uh, she is a MBBS and MD from uh, KMC Mangalore. And then she has done her DM neurology from Sri Chitra itself in 2019. And at present she is working in Calicut. Uh, please, Dr. Nambir, go ahead with the talk. Yes. And she'll be speaking on approach to the problem and the way ahead. Okay. Dr. Raju, can you uh, stop sharing your screen? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, visible? Yes. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll be speaking about the approach to the problem and the way ahead uh, when it comes to sexual dysfunction in men with epilepsy. So uh, as mentioned earlier, the etiology when it comes to sexual dysfunction in men with uh, epilepsy is multifactorial. That is, uh, it could be an endocrine dysfunction secondary to uncontrolled epilepsy itself. It could be iatrogenic due to AADs. It could be due to the psychiatric or psychosocial comorbidities. So the evaluation and management requires a multi-pronged and multidisciplinary approach, uh, which has to be stepwise. So uh, how we can go about it is initially we can uh, assess all patients with epilepsy for sexual dysfunction using a standard screening questionnaire. 
uh, followed, following which we should uh, do a detailed clinical interview uh, and evaluation by a clinical psychologist. And if any associated anxiety or depression is detected, then psychiatric uh, evaluation and treatment should be done. Uh, following that, screening of and management of any systemic causes or contributory drugs should be done. Uh, the patient should also be screened and treated for local causes in association with a urologist. There should also be a comprehensive hormonal evaluation. And uh, the most important thing is to improve seizure control by optimizing anti-epileptic drug therapy. And if uh, an, uh, an AED is suspected to be the reason behind the sexual dysfunction to switch to non-enzyme inducing drugs. Uh, epilepsy surgery is to be considered in patients with drug resistant uh, epilepsy and uh, hormonal supplements with testosterone should be considered in patients with low testosterone levels and in patients with erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation symptomatic treatment with PD E5 inhibitors or SSRIs should be considered. So coming to each of these steps in detail so the first step is a screening questionnaire. So there are uh, multiple options uh, for screening questionnaires. And uh, this is important to uh, quantify the sexual dysfunction in a patient objectively and to assess the response to treatment. So of these questionnaires, as Dr. Raju mentioned, uh, the uh, more uh, commonly used questionnaire is the International Index of Erectile Function. Uh, the Arizona Sexual Experiences uh, Scale is a, a briefer and more easy to uh, administer test, which is also quite reliable. So uh, this is the Arizona Sexual Experiences Scale. And in that, there are just five questions uh, regarding the sex drive, arousal, erection, orgasm, and uh, sexual satisfaction. Uh, however, none of these questions, uh, majority of these questionnaires haven't been uh, studied in patients with epilepsy. Uh, but the IIEF has recently uh, been studied by Dawson et al. Uh, in, uh, in 2019 uh, in patients with epilepsy and has been found to be quite reliable. Uh, and in addition to the uh, routine uh, questions, they have also incorporated questions related to uh, epilepsy, like the type of seizure, uh, medications that the patient is taking, the duration of the epilepsy, the, when the last seizure occurred, and if the patient missed the dose of seizure medication because of how it made the patient feel sexually. So uh, incorporating these questions additionally would uh, make it easier to correlate uh, whether the sexual dysfunction is related to epilepsy or associated drugs. So the second step is a detailed clinical interview and counseling. So a full screening for depression and anxiety disorder should be done and a consultation with a psychologist may be warranted and a full sexual and relationship history should be taken from the patient and the partner and life stressor should be evaluated for and patients found to have psychosocial issues or underlying psychiatric comorbidity should be advised counseling and proper treatment of psychiatric illness should be initiated in consultation with the psychiatrist. The third step is to evaluate for systemic causes or drugs. So the common drugs which uh, can be, uh, contribute to the sexual dysfunction are uh, uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, barbiturates, uh, benzodiazepines, beta blockers, alpha adrenergic blockers, and uh, medical conditions like diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease, uh, any pre-existing endocrine problems like hyperprolactinemia, hypo, hyperthyroidism, uh, and uh, uh, pre-existing significantly low testosterone, all those have to be ruled out. And, uh, other, uh, and any pre-existing neurological causes like spinal cord injury or disease, neuropathies, any psychiatric illness, all these conditions need to be ruled out. The fourth step is urology screening for local causes. So the clinical investigation should include the urogenital region, the size of the prostate and emptying mechanism of the bladder, uh, because there is some evidence that treatment of bladder neck obstruction and lower urinary tract symptoms uh, may lead to better sexual performance. Another uh, less commonly uh, administered test is the nocturnal penile tumescence. It is useful, but it uh, needs hospitalization overnight to get correct results. Uh, it helps to distinguish between physiological, that is organic and psychogenic erectile dysfunction. So uh, in organic uh, erectile dysfunction, both daytime and nocturnal erections are impaired. Whereas if it is psychological, then uh, erections during uh, REM sleep are preserved. The fourth step is uh, comprehensive hormonal evaluation. Uh, in this, uh, the patient has to undergo a detailed, uh, detailed metabolic and hormonal screening. 
uh, that includes thyroid function tests, serum levels of total and free testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin, prolactin, estradiol, LH and FSH levels. Uh, patients with hypogonadism and low levels of testosterone may benefit with uh, testosterone supplements. However, the sequencing procedure should be first to treat the epilepsy and then if the neuroendocrine dysfunction of the patient persists to discuss a supplemental hormonal therapy, which I shall be eventually dis uh, discussing. So the fifth step, as I mentioned, is AD optimization. And if uh, an AD is suspected to be the cause of the sexual dysfunction, to switch to non-enzyme inducing drugs. Uh, so, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, seizure freedom is associated with low risk of sexual dysfunction and this should be the goal in all patients. Uh, modern anti-epileptic treatment should, besides seizure, seizure freedom, should also include the challenge of achieving the best conditions for sexuality and fertility for the treated patient. Uh, this is something we pay more attention to in females, but in males also, this should be taken into consideration. So, uh, as mentioned earlier again, uh, uh, drugs, which uh, the enzyme-inducing drugs, which commonly are associated with uh, erectile dysfunction, decreased uh, libido, are uh, the most commonly uh, carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbitone, and primidone. Sodium valproate has also uh, been found to decrease libido and erectile dysfunction. Amongst the newer AADs, uh, topiramate, pigabalin, uh, uh, zonosamide, and lacrosamide have been found to cause erectile dysfunction, but in uh, isolated case reports. And uh, gabapentin has been found to cause orga or orgasmic dysfunction. So the relatively uh, better AADs when it comes to sexual in, uh, function and have even shown to improve sexual function are of carbamazepine, uh, lamotrigine, and levetiracetam. But the research on the treatment of sexual dysfunction induced by anti-epileptic drugs is still rare. There are no guidelines or expert consensus on their management. Uh, some studies indicated that after switching to another AAD, the sexual dysfunction may resolve. But further studies are needed to confirm the result of changing AAD treatment and to clarify which AAD is the best choice for a specific situation. So just briefly touching about, uh, upon few studies that have uh, uh, shown the effect of switching from one anti-epileptic uh, to another on the effect of uh, sexual uh, dysfunction. Uh, in this study, uh, 600, uh, uh, study uh, regarding oxcarbamazepine, 673 adult male patients with partial epilepsy uh, were uh, initiated on either first-line monotherapy with carbamazepine or switched from a previous uh, AAD to carbamazepine. And out of that, uh, an improvement was observed in 79.4% patients uh, and 10.1% uh, patients improved no imp uh, experienced no impairment at the final visit. And uh, these improvements were more marked than those patients who were pre-treated with enzyme-inducing AADs. Similarly, another study uh, with a lamotrigine. In this, they studied 141 patients treated with lamotrigine for a period of eight months. This was also either uh, lamotrigine was initiated as first-line monotherapy or uh, the uh, patient was switched to lamotrigine from a prior AAD. So in this, they found the most benefit in uh, women uh, who were uh, newly initiated on lamotrigine. Uh, 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 the questionnaire they used was the changes in sexual functioning questionnaire, which studied five domains. That is frequency, interest, pleasure, excitement, and orgasm. So in all five domains, in women who were in, uh, initiated with lamotrigine, uh, there was a significant improvement. In men, there was a significant improvement uh, in only in the pleasure dimension. And in the uh, group of patients in whom a previous AAD was substituted by lamotrigine, uh, in both men and women, only two domains were uh, there was significant improvement. That is uh, pleasure and orgasm in men and desire and frequency in women. So uh, the result of uh, uh, so they, this was postulated to be to be due to the imp uh, due to improvement in epilepsy after lamotrigine was started, changes in the quality of life, and uh, elimination of side effects from other AADs or a mood stabilizing effect of uh, lamotrigine. So uh, the uh, reason postulated for a patient uh, newly initiated on lamotrigine showing a uh, better improvement than those who were switched from AED was uh, postulated to be uh, probably the washout period of the prior AED. Uh, the wearing off of the prior AED effect was not complete. That was one of the reasons that was proposed. So uh, the sixth step is consider uh, epilepsy surgery in drug-resistant epilepsy. 
so uh, there are very, uh, very few longitudinal studies regarding this and those are those were also done around 50 years back the more recent studies are cross sectional studies uh, which have been done this is a study uh, from our institute which uh, uh, study 50 uh, males uh, with mesial uh, temporal lobe epilepsy who underwent surgery and compared it to uh, 50 uh, age match healthy controls so a uh, majority of the patient had an improvement post surgery uh, to their status prior to surgery um, uh, but uh, compared to controls there was uh, they still had a significant sexual dysfunction uh and those who after atl were seizure free had one or no anti epileptic drug and had an eeg without epileptiform abnormalities achieved a better set, uh, sexual outcome the six uh, the seventh step is considered testosterone supplementation in those with low levels so uh, herzog had uh, reported that uh, testosterone alone was only moderately e effective in uh, restoring reproductive and sexual function and he postulated that this was due to the uh, when you supplement testosterone uh, you, you induce aromatase and aromatase converts the testosterone to estradiol which is uh, de de detrimental to the sexual uh, function so uh, he had suggested that treatment using a combination of testosterone and aromatase in, uh, inhibitor may be more beneficial than testosterone alone as it can reduce the estradiol levels as well so he uh, initially did a study uh, testosterone versus testosterone and testolactone and uh, he found that the combination had significantly better effects on sexual function than uh, testosterone alone This led to a uh, larger study in which uh, they compared uh, depo testosterone and uh, anastrozole combination versus depo testosterone and placebo, and uh, they found that uh, the normalization of sexual function uh, occurred in 72.2 percent of patients with the combination of uh, aromatase inhibitor and te testosterone, and uh, it was 47.4 in the uh, testosterone plus uh, placebo group. and uh, this was uh, uh, not statistically significant but still it was uh, quite a big difference so uh, the reason for it not being statistically significant was postulated to be probably the lower sample size and some of these patients were also receiving enzyme inducing drugs uh, aids uh, at the same time so uh, the eighth step is symptomatic treatment so symptomatic approaches to the treatment of erectile dysfunction can be implemented either in conjunction with the above treatment plans or if the above uh, methods fail so uh, the broad efficacy and the ease of use of uh, pde5 inhibitor drugs has led to their becoming the first line pharmacological treatment for ed so the pde5 inhibitors commonly used are sildenafil vardenafil and tadalafil and uh, sildenafil and vardenafil they uh, have a, a, an onset of action and duration which is quite similar uh, so me uh, peak plasma levels obtained at around uh, 60 minutes and duration is around 4 hours tadalafil has a slower onset of action and longer duration of action and the most common adverse effects of the pde5 inhibitors are headache flushing and dyspepsia and uh, the administration of sildenafil or vardenafil after a high fat meal slows absorption and reduces peak plasma levels Uh, tadalafil can be given with food without effect, uh, effect on the onset or efficacy uh, it's of some concern that uh, generalized tonic clonic seizures have been reported in some patients taking sildenafil who had no history of epilepsy uh, coming to premature ejaculation there are no drugs specifically indicated for the treatment of uh, premature ejaculation and uh, uh, the american urological association's guidelines for pharmacological treatment have shown that topical anesthetics and ssris are effective and according to a, a more recent uh, systematic uh, review and meta analysis uh, paroxetine provided better efficacy than placebo fluoxetine and estelopram in the treatment of uh, premature ejaculation with well tolerated side effects the further options belong to the urologist armamentarium that is uh, placing an elastic constricting band at the base of the penis to prevent outflow of blood using a vacuum device and uh, creating negative pressure drawing blood into the cavernous body to achieve and maintain erection intra uh, urethral application of pge1 uh, intra cavernous self injection of papaverin phentolamine and pge1 uh, surgical treatment that is the implantation of a hydraulic a uh, penile prosthesis may be uh, considered if all the other strategies fail 
So uh, coming to the take home message and the way ahead, uh, generally patients with depression, uncontrolled epilepsy, longer duration of epilepsy, focal epilepsy, higher seizure frequency, and those receiving enzyme induced, uh, inducing AADs and multiple AADs are more likely to have sexual dysfunction. A multi-pronged and multidisciplinary approach is essential for optimizing the sexual functions in persons with epilepsy. Uh, doctors need to do more when treating epileptic patients and uh, sexual dysfunction before AAD therapy and the risk factors of sexual dysfunction such as depression and anxiety should be considered. Uh, sexual uh, dysfunction should be monitored in all patients receiving AADs. Once it occurs, it should be confirmed as being related to an AAD. And for patients receiving polytherapy, the causative AAD, AAD should be identified. And although switching to another AAD was indicated in a few studies for specific AADs, this needs to be further confirmed and how to choose the appropriate substitute AAD needs to be addressed. Hormonal supplementation and symptomatic treatment may be offered to patients as indicated. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Purnima. It was a very nice, it was a very nice presentation. You have covered, all, I think, almost everything. And the way ahead is also very clear. So I now I'll request Dr. Himanshu Soni, who is a product of Sri Chitra. In 2010, he joined DM Neurology, as far as I remember. And after that, he did his uh, fellowship in Epilepsy in 2013. Uh, and at present, he is working in Abu Dhabi Cleveland Clinic. Uh, please, Dr. Himanshu. And he'll sum up and chair the session and uh, tell the gist what exactly uh, uh, to go in, how to go in this such cases. Hi, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, isn't my slider visible? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, at the outset, uh, uh, I thank uh, profusely Dr. Uh, ALR Madam, Ashwata Madam, for giving me this opportunity. Although I was a bit uh, reluctant uh, at the outset before, but, but uh, this is a wonderful opportunity. <clears throat> There's no doubt about it. So uh, greetings from Abu Dhabi. Uh, so um, my job is is to just summarize, and I'll try to do that, uh, uh, you know, in a clinician's perspective, uh, because I'm not a researcher per se, but I'll try to cover as much as possible. So my resources are. Uh, uh, it was a nice review article by Rator sir, and uh, uh, there is a series in seizure 2008, uh, gender issues in epilepsy. Uh, that is also very informative. But you know, first of all, uh, you know, as far as sexual function in epilepsy is concerned, we usually follow a policy of don't ask, don't tell. You know, now if the question is if I deserve an award for this, probably yes, because I really not, I admit that I have really not discussed about sexual function with most of my patients or probably all of my patients. If I'm proud of it, I doubt about it, but yeah. The other one for not telling is I borrowed from my patient because usually they also don't tell and they also don't discuss. So when I when I try to kind of you know uh, find out probably or kind of think what is leading to this problem of don't ask, don't tell, there are many issues I believe. So all are pertaining to lack of communication. You know, first of all, we all say that there is less time in our busy practice when we were training. The sheer number of patients was inundating and now when we are in our private practice, there are other factors, there is still pressure of numbers, there is corporate medicine. Coming to unmarried patients, especially in, uh, you know, in our cultural Indian setting, speaking to unmarried patients about uh, sexual function is a taboo. Even in married patients, there is a fear, we fear about you know, opening a Pandora's box. After all, we are not marriage counselors. Then there is accompanying bystander shyness. A patient may be accompanied by a parent or by a sibling, brother or sister or friend. And to admit, you know, many times sexual function is not the burning issue for all stakeholders, be it patients, be it the doctors and uh, be it the bystanders as well. Sometimes there are financial issues. If I want to refer a patient to the psychologist, the patient may crib about it. The medical insurance may not cover it. And also sometimes there is a notion we have that sometimes hyposexuality is not bad, especially in refractory epilepsy or in unmarried people where there are behavior abnormalities. So there are interpersonal issues, social, cultural and regional factors, which probably result in lack of communication. And that leads to being this factor being ignored in our patients. 
so when i was trying to prepare this uh, talk you know dr google came up with this questions some of the questions are pretty uh, basic like dating a man with epilepsy can a man with epilepsy have a baby but you know there are other questions as well which are probably more specific and many of these questions have been covered by dr purnima and dr raju uh, so i'll try to summarize in again in a q and a format question and answer format so uh, we just saw that you know like like all chronic disorders i believe like epilepsy is a chronic disorder even probably people with chronic daily headache people with stroke people with multiple sclerosis or other chronic neurological disorders they will be having higher uh, prevalence of sexual dysfunction the only peculiar thing about epilepsy is epilepsy is not as pervasive as chronic daily headache or stroke where there is impediment on a daily basis epilepsy is intermittently impeding but still the prevalence is almost 1.5 to 2 fold higher and uh, this norwegian study also confirmed that many studies also mention that and uh, does type of epilepsy matter yes focal type of focal epilepsy is four times more likely than idiopathic generalized epilepsy among focal epilepsy temporal epilepsy is more common than extra temporal and does laterality matter yes it has been shown especially in females it has been shown also in men that right temporal epilepsy has higher prevalence of uh, sexual dysfunction now uh, when we talk of uh, focal epilepsy you know uh, the sexual activation in brain mainly localizes to the limbic and paralimbic regions this diagram shows the green colored is are the limbic structures and the paralimbic regions are orbitofrontal cortex insula and the other regions such as hypothalamic nuclei and the midbrain tegmentum so by the rule of thumb we would presume that any epileptic zone epileptogenic zone occurring in these limbic and paralimbic regions can potentially cause sexual dysfunction so to uh, again reiterate higher prevalence of sexual dysfunction has been noted in patients with uncontrolled seizures longer duration of epilepsy higher seizure frequency focal epilepsy and patients receiving polytherapy patients receiving polytherapy also means that these are the patients who have uncontrolled seizures these are the patients probably who have longer duration of epilepsy and higher seizure frequency and focal epilepsy right and also we also discuss the factors of aed especially the enzyme inducing one however many of these studies have had had its limitations uh, there is a subjective nature of uh, defining sexual dysfunction I, i believe the sexual dysfunction would have a lot of interpersonal social culture, cultural or regional uh, definitions like in the norwegian study <clears throat> they found that uh, men with epilepsy uh, uh, had lesser number of sexual partners in the preceding one year as compared to men with uh, not having epilepsy like they did not mention whether these uh, these were married patients these were adult patients or whatever so you know this has its own cultural implications then there is lack of validated and uniform rating scales there is methodological heterogeneity and all these studies have been plagued by a small number of patients because they are either cross sectional or case series just to summarize uh, uh, we saw a lot of information about anti epileptic drugs we all we we, we know that the enzyme inducing ones are the major culprits like tegretol phenytoin phenobarb primidone they all universally reduce uh, uh, cause hyposexuality there are conflicting data about ox carbazepine it is said that ox carbazepine below 900 mg per day uh, does not cause enzyme induction and above 900 mg per day can cause enzyme induction so maybe doses above 900 mg may not be after all really kind of uh, sexual function friendly and even levetiracetam there is some gender discrepancy in women it has been shown to have improved sexual function but in men in in some case series it has been shown to have erectile dysfunction and decreased libido so so we we understand about the older uh, generation aed is about its in this enzyme induction properties but what are the mechanisms which which lead to sexual dysfunction even the newer aed is so several have been proposed uh, newer aed is there can be reduced central excitatory transmission like sodium channel calcium channel which can cause a uh, overall inhibitory activity there is modulation of dopaminergic and serotonergic neurons in specific brain regions for example levetiracetam is known to uh, increase serotonin activity in the brain stem now it has been 
known that dopamine has an excitatory effect on sexuality whereas serotonin has an inhibitory effect so probably you know serotonin is for that reason is also called as the god molecule because serotonin levels have been uh, found to high in uh, people who have undergone spiritual experiences and all and uh, not always but spiritual experiences have been uh, associated with lesser se sexual activity as such and uh, peripherally uh, topiramate and zonisamide can inhibit uh, carbonic anhydrase and can act, act peripherally as well so this was just one study which I, I i came across it was a german study which again mentions they had studied only carmelzepine oxcarbazepine valproate and lamotrigine and uh, 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 in relation to the sexual hormone binding globulin uh, the enzyme inducing drugs they increase this binding globulin levels which attach which uh, makes less free testosterone available and that can lead to uh, hyposexuality so they concluded that maybe lamotrigine and valproate are the drug of choice so valproate is 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 controversy some some studies say good some studies say bad so just summarizing on the psychiatric and psychosocial factors affecting sexual dysfunction there is uh, it's well known that there's a bi-directional relationship between anxiety depression and sexual dysfunction like sexual dysfunction will cause anxiety dep depression and vice versa psychosis which is known to occur 10 times more common in epilepsy this also uh, predisposes to sexual dysfunction so although none of the anti-epileptic drugs per se causes hyperprolactinemia but definitely the psychiatric medications can cause hyperprolactinemia which can suppress libido arousal and orgasm so you know just to uh, see which of the medications can cause significant hyperprolactinemia to the tune that they might be responsible for sexual dysfunction so the the usual suspects the uh, the typical antipsychotics haloperidol clorpromazine even the atypical ones like risperidone uh, uh, some studies have also uh, shown that sertraline, fluoxetine, pyroxetine, but uh, the evidence is plus minus like minimal increase, but not to abnormal levels of hyperprolactin. So one uh, good thing about like, I always try to find what is the difference between nortriptyline and amitriptyline. Here I can see that nortriptyline does not raise prolactin levels where it does, where amitriptyline does. So probably this is one factor uh, differing between the two and uh, <clears throat> so this is about the drug induced hyperprolactinemia so coming to psychosocial factors epilepsy especially uncontrolled epilepsy can cause unemployment low self esteem uh, there is a stigma associated with it this all can lead to fear of rejection sexual inadequacy and uh, unattractiveness so people who have uncontrolled focal epilepsy frequent seizures may be nocturnal may be daytime they are certain to have fear of having seizures during intercourse as well. So that can lead to an avoidance behavior that can lead to a feeling of rejection in the partner. There can be, this can lead to a feeling of guilt and dissatisfaction in the partner of the patient. And speaking on the same line, when we are talking of fear of having seizures during intercourse, uh, I think uh, reflex epilepsy, especially organism induced seizures were discussed in one of the previous talks, but how are organism induced seizures have been uh, specifically described in women so far so i came across this report where a male was found to have orgasm induced seizures and only orgasm induced seizures uh, he did not have any other seizures and uh, surprisingly his one of his seizure was was uh, could be captured and it could be confirmed that this is a seizure and not a non epileptic event and this was obviously not by a video eg study this was by ambulatory eg where they captured a seizure and few points were, were peculiar in this uh, report was it was a male. Second, uh, the orgasm induced seizures are usually uh, found to have right sided onset, but this was uh, from a left side here. We can see that the red is left and the right is uh, blue. So there is a, a higher activity going on the left side. So coming to, you know, is it all hyposexuality or there is hyper as well, right? So. The, the definition of hypersexuality may differ as per uh, region or culture, whatever, but there have been some uh, anecdotal reports about, we know that there are, there are ictal manifestation during seizures. There are sexual auras uh, uh, where we, we find that seizures uh, arising from the temporal lobe. 
there can be genital auras where there is somatosensory sensations in the genitals has been reported in patients with parietal lobe epilepsy and there are sexual genital automatisms like these may not be associated with sexual feelings but there is some behavior pertaining to the genitals and this can be temporal or frontal lobe origin especially it has been found out that those pelvic thrusting movements or hypermotor movements may have a frontal lobe origin and the the other ones uh, uh, may have a temporal lobe origin then <clears throat> as we saw that uh, as a reflex epilepsy orgasm induced seizures are more common in women the opposite also the ictal orgasms also are uh, more common in women especially the uh, temporal lobe origin epilepsy so overall interictal hypersexuality has not been much reported and is very less common as compared to interictal hyposexuality so just to point out few uh, just summarizing on effect of epilepsy surgery overall it has been shown that although there is a lot of dearth of data but disappearance of seizures and interictal discharges following surgery may positively affect the pituitary hypothalamic axis resulting in improved hormonal levels and better sexual functions now the group from uh, uh, melbourne in australia they have a lot of publications many of these sexual function uh, relation publications where it was a spurt of publications in the first few years of uh, the 2000s so bayed et al they reported that uh they reported better post surgical sexual outcomes in temporal uh, epilepsy in those patients who had higher co contralateral amygdalar volumes they also compared temporal versus extra temporal surgery sexual outcomes and they found better sexual outcomes in temporal lobe epilepsy so the same study also reported this was a very interesting article which was published in 2002 by the same group uh, from melbourne bayed et al they described seven patients uh, i think uh, five were female and two were male but the gender does not really matter because the patient group is small so they described seven patients who had undergone epilepsy surgery for temporal lobe epilepsy and they had hyper sexuality uh, one of the patient uh, had change of sexual orientation from heterosexuality to homosexuality surprisingly two of the female patients wanted the same surgery be to to be done in their husbands because they it, the surgery had dramatically improved the their uh, sexual desires so what what they had found that many of these patients had evidence of bilateral temporal lobe abnormalities so probably so the discussion of this was you know whether it it uh, led to kind of a transient kluver bussy phenotype because all of the hypersexuality in these patients were transient ranging from around 3 months to maximum of 2 uh, years so i also try to search about syndromic associations and you know obviously like we like i said the hypothalamus has a role in a sexual function and we know that the more anteriorly placed hamartomas which are also called as para hypothalamic or the pedunculated ones they have more incidence of precocious puberty and that can lead to uh, early sexual function or sexual dysfunction in in in, in this patient group and uh, uh, klinefelter syndrome which is the commonest cause of hypogonadism in males can have seizures there have there have been case reports where uh, this uh, uh, report in 1998 pediatric neurology by tatum et al they described uh, 12 patients three american and nine uh, european patients with klinefelter which had seizures all of them were relatively easy to control all had uh, generalized tonic clonic seizures mris were negative and uh, all of them had the mental retardation and behavioral problems so client filters can have uh, seizures as well engelman syndrome in contrast has reported to have normal sexual function there is a lot of down syndrome data coming now because more and more uh, pa patients afflicted with this uh, uh, problem are integrating in the society their life span is increasing they are being uh, treated as normal we re recently there was a case report where one family adopted a down syndrome child so three documented cases are there where men with trisomy 21 bore a child and also females have known to uh, 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 give birth to uh, have pregnant uh, pregnancies and give birth and uh, it not necessarily that all of them will have tri trisomy 21 the incidence of trisomy 21 in uh, uh, children of females with trisomy 21 is about 50% so the way ahead uh, uh, just to summarize uh, uh, in in totally like i feel 
epilepsy training can have more hands on psychology experience we learn a lot about epilepsy but less about behavior uh, so i i'm not sure if there are interdisciplinary silos but if there are they need to be broken probably between uh, neurology and urology maybe between neurology and psychology and there is a need of multi center studies within india <clears throat> so i try to search also you know sexual dysfunction in non operated bilateral mts but there are there are, there are no studies uh, in in this subgroup i did not cover cruer busi uh, because it's it's little bit a, of a tangential topic and i did not find any data uh, on people with uh, who are on ketogenic diet for epilepsy and does it have an impact on sexual function there's a lot of data probably because ketogenic diet is given in kids and but there is a lot of data on keto diet for weight loss and there have been uh, uh, contradictory reports some of them mention improvement some of them mentions worsening and uh, i did not find any data in sexual dysfunction and non epileptic uh, seizures or seizures so thank you for your patient care thank you all the speakers i think uh, everybody has uh, covered the topic very well and they have justified the topics given to them we have got some questions i think and uh, we'll start first question is asked by dr ashlata itself ma'am only she has asked a patient on valparin genetic generalized epilepsy on the drug for last 10 years has azospermia and married with no issues valparin was in, was in, uh, in uh, incriminated took out val valparin now on levetiracetam 2.5 gram per day problem continues and how will you go about in this case uh, uh, dr raju can you please all the pdfs know this patient he is the one from that uh, textile yeah, shop okay ma'am okay ma'am yeah so i think dr raju and gunima both can i think uh, yeah, or what is the problem can you mute others and then uh, these speakers can be ravish ravish you can hear some songs on the background uh, that's i think by the kid yeah <laughs> beautiful yeah patient with genetic epilepsy on valproate has got azospermia and uh, now married with no issues now we have changed dono dekh raha hai yahan par and problem persists same problem so thank you i'll just try to answer the question and then my other co speakers and then my mentor will try to add on to that so valproate is uh, well known to cause uh, decrease uh, the uh, decrease in the function of these pumps and uh, because of the direct effect on mitochondria and which is important for the metabolism of the the sperms and uh, in situations like these we do not know what was the background history of this patient and what was uh, whether we can directly attribute this azospermia to valproate we do not have a background uh, data of the patient and whether the azospermia was something uh, was caused by something else but uh, like uh, if we like uh, if we think that it's because of the valproate and then uh, uh, we have chance to levetiracetam so uh, there's uh, the the part of the spermatogenesis like uh, had it been affected by valproate should have been improved and there could have been some improvement in his uh, sperm counts uh, but like uh, on prolonged uh, valproate what has been seen is the in the seminiferous tubules and even testicular volume has shown to be decreased so uh, there are some data of valproate directly affecting these seminiferous tubules and then uh, the overall testicular functions getting affected so if it is uh, largely affected it may not be totally reversible and with the change of the medication it may not totally improve so we need to counsel the patient about this particular thing uh and uh, may, may not be directly like related with the uh, drug itself and even if it's a drug uh, itself after changing the medication if it has not improved we need to counsel that uh, the, the 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 we need to counsel the even we have changed the drug and it's not getting improved so uh, 
I think that, that is what we need to counsel about. And uh, I think uh, my other quest speakers can add on to the uh, points. Yeah, Purnima, what do you want? Uh, like, Yes, sir, I, I agree. Like, We don't know how long term these effects are uh, when you give uh, AADs. And uh, there are no large scale studies on it. So it could be a long term side effect. And uh, levetiracetam, uh, even though it's relatively better uh, to, you know, when it comes to improving sexual function, there have been uh, some case reports which have uh, postulated a central mechanism for sexual dysfunction uh, in patients who take levetiracetam also. Uh, not related to azospermia, but uh, 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 erectile dysfunction and have been reported in patients on levetiracetam also uh, because of central mechanisms. Okay. Himanshu, there is one question for you. Ma'am only has uh, messaged in this regarding hypersexuality, how to tackle it, referring to a psychiatrist, or you need to change the AEDs? Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, have, I did not find any. Uh, so, you know, there are anecdotal reports about uh, levetiracetam and uh, uh, probably like oxcarbazepine, changing from carmazepine to uh, oxcarbazepine. But there is no consistent data on uh, uh, implicating uh, the anti-epileptics in relation to hypersexuality. I would believe there are a lot of uh, factors around it. Uh, uh, you know, one whether it is related to epilepsy, unrelated to epilepsy, other psychosocial, psychiatric factors, uh, and its evaluation and all. And uh, I think in in general, I would say that if um, we can uh, prove a uh, causal association like uh, it has started after an anti-epileptic uh, you know and it was non-existent before and we have the luxury of changing the anti-epileptic of course we can try that otherwise okay. it has to be more of a holistic approach okay thank, thank you. you it's thank not you. very common but uh, we do have cases especially with temporal lobe epilepsy and uh, even to the uh, doctor they communicate in a very weird manner and uh, they develop a sort of uh, very unholy relationship that is they're hallucinating and uh, had some one or two bad experiences also regarding the first case that is what uh, prompted me to pick up this particular topic because that case is ongoing in the court and uh, ramesha is here ramesha okay. did a wonderful job before he left chitra he gave a certificate saying that you can go ahead and get married this particular person who <laughs> very cunningly uh, made him get that certificate because he had uh, no libido at that time. That is what I understand. And later in due course of time, he had um, severe lack of uh, sperm count as well. Now I've been twice to the court and there uh, it's not a welcoming experience at all. The uh, judge is in favor of the man always. It is always the doctor's duty to tell them before starting a drug it's coming like more or like a western country status in which uh, once i was uh, told that uh, you being the doctor although i was not the doctor ramesha was taking care of this patient but having said that that's okay whoever takes care of the patient i'm not going to ask him what is your sexual function as uh, somebody was rightly pointing out here himanshi was saying no it's not my cup of tea especially being a woman um how is your sexual life premarital or marital or post-marital. I, I have never asked in my entire, uh, my, what do you call it, the 20 years of my <laughs> epilepsy experience or training here. But this is going on. It's a, it's a hell on me that uh, each time the family court judge is um, uh, sort of uh, creating a mess actually. And this is not something very palatable to others. They all uh, um, see you with a very different eye and we are not able to answer anything. So the third one is going to come up soon. The divorce case is going on and the lady is asking for what you call that elements, uh, subsistence elements or whatever. And this guy is saying that I would have never married if that certificate had not been given to me. So that prompted me to um, just giving certificates also be very careful. I don't think it is relevant outside India, but once upon a time we were very much um, uh, 
uh, we, we used to give certificates in and out. Now I've stopped that business, not because of this, due to several other reasons. So it is a real problem only. And are these things reversible? I mean, the lack of libido or whatever. And uh, is there a time frame that is set uh, after which you can call that the enzyme induced AED is causing this is reversible or not? Any of you? Yeah. So I don't. Ramesh is also a veteran in this because long time back when he wanted to do a study, he came and told me that I would prefer to do this, madam. I don't want anything else. So fifty T A D patients. Ramesh, any comments? Yes, Ramesh, you can contribute. Anyone of you? No problem. So at what point of time should we ask all this uh, to your uh, male, uh, so-called person with epilepsy? On the first sitting itself, how are you going about your sexual life? And I don't know what all questions to be asked. Purima can probably tell me. You cannot keep on checking the sex hormones and stuff like that, no? And do you think that they are going to uh, speak aloud and say that I don't have uh, any problem with uh, erection or whatever? I don't know. I mean, I'm so, completely at loss, actually. Yeah. But we can have, when we have a uh, talk with the patient in the chamber, we can definitely ask this question. Questions, no? One to one at least. Uh, prior to starting the AED, uh, we can uh, ask them the question because okay. at least we'll know whether it is in, uh, correlated to the uh, anti epileptic drug or not. Make so, a note. Or we can get a pre treatment levels of hormones and all, something like that. Oh, that is very impractical, no? <laughs> treatment level may be difficult. <laughs> uh, but once the patient complains of it, then we can. Uh, do the hormonal levels once the patient is symptomatic. But to all the people who are 30 plus are here, uh, I mean, have they ever complained of it uh, in the initial two years at least? I mean, is it common? I being a female, I may be uh, not getting that much of exposure, but to men sitting here, do they um, ever complain of having a problem with their sexual function? Some, and, some patients do come, they do uh, complain and say, but quite a lot don't say. I think so. We are dealing with two topics here. Epilepsy itself is a taboo. Then again, discussion on sex again is a taboo. So we are actually dealing with two issues which are society issues and which are uh, patients don't want to talk on it, for it. No positives. They know no positives will come. It is not like any other chronic disease what Himanshu told like a stroke or a MS or something like that. This is epilepsy and the Taboo is huge in the society. So coming with the initial questions of on sexual life, I think that will be uh, too much for them. But at least uh, maybe a year or two into the treatment, we can definitely ask one or two questions to the males at least. Do they have nocturnal penile to be sense and all that we can at least ask. How to frame all these questions is a very difficult uh, so, I, mean, I, I think I can, you know, what I felt is as a, as a rule of thumb, those patients uh, whom we feel are going to, you know, become uh, or going to have chronic epilepsy or those patients who are going to require two or more than two AEDs or those patients who are going to require pre-surgical evaluation, probably at some point of time on one of the follow-ups, we should offer them a questionnaire uh, as a screening thing. And if one of, you know, if those questionnaires has some, uh, you know, uh, uh, points, I think we should refer them to a psychologist directly because I mean, I think that is the most professional way. Although I, I <clears throat> although I went through the question as I always felt these question is they involve only the patient. They, they, they don't involve the partner of the patient. Partner, yeah. The partner also has to be involved because, you know, maybe uh, one person feels hypo or hyper, but the partner may not feel like that. No, no, patient itself not opening up, then partner, how he or she will uh, come out with all the answers. Because in India, see, partner satisfaction is never considered to be a very uh, major thing, no? So that is an issue, actually. So I do, But at least partner can contribute or uh, can give you a clue, okay, he or she is having a problem, actually. That can actually help you. Then you can go further in the history and other things. Yeah, you are right in that. Okay, I agree. So Ramesha, what is your way of approach there? I mean, we have heard the practice in India and uh, people who have been practicing in India. Yes, Ramesh? 
in uk we do not ask patients regarding their sexual satisfaction and other sexual function mm -hmm. routinely uh, what i've seen in my clinical practice is that uh, maybe one out of 10 patients do complain then i make a referral to the psychologist and endocrinologist for initial evaluation i tell them that the drugs could be the factor especially if they are on older drugs but as soon as we start the conversation regarding the change in anti epileptic drug if somebody is on older anti epileptic drug like uh, carbamazepine or phenytoin or valproate if they are seizure free most of the patients will be reluctant to change the epilepsy medicine then ultimately we end up with the only consultation with the psychologist to look for any psychological factor and uh, endocrinologists they look for some hormonal assessment and some of the patients do try other uh, uh, treatments like viagra and other things but what i have seen is that very few patients come to the clinic with uh, one of the complaints regarding sexual dysfunction uh, and uh, we do not ask routinely and our epilepsy nurses also do not ask they have got standard questionnaire for initial consultation especially regarding the bone health driving safety all those things but in that one of the questionnaire it's not, sexual function is not included so there is a scope to improve improve but the what we have to offer to the patient is very limited from the epilepsy clinic per se maybe we can consider a referral to the psychologist and endocrinologist a bit liberally if we know that patient is suffering from sexual dysfunction but if we get an informed consent at least we can um we can save ourselves from this medico legal issues like what i'm facing now mm -hmm. every now and then i have to pay take money from my pocket and then go to the court and the court fee is still pending it's almost 5 years now so as himanshu said i've seen only in melbourne with uh, sam bakovic they have a very very structured questionnaire which sarah wilson you might have seen one of the co authors in that uh, uh, publications is all sarah wilson she gives a very well structured questionnaire i do not know what among these but then at the first visit itself they get an written informed consent because the australians are more like a barbarian type they are not polished britishers so they'll make a big problem out of it so that's the only place where i've seen uh, but uh, where else i've visited uh, i have not seen that anup sir is here sir do you want to comment anything on it Anup sir, I was here initially. I think he is. Um, he here, sir. Okay, no problem. So, what is the take-home message? Finally, Himanshu, do we have to incorporate one of the uh, question questionnaires into our uh, the whole sort of uh, brown file or any patient who is coming to you? But uh, shall I ask you a question? If, if a JME patient with a facia coming to you and you're saying that I'm going to introduce a drug which has these many side effects and all, um, would you want to uh, take up? Yeah, so I, I agree on that. I am not going to enumerate all the side effects on that medicine. I, I my approach will be first is we have to stop your seizures, and and then rest of the because this approach you know. Many of our patients, <clears throat> like for example, amitriptyline, we start in headaches. I tell to my patients, and I'm I'm telling you beforehand that this is an antidepressant, but I'm not giving you for that reason. And although these these are the mentioned the side effects, they do not happen in everybody. So, but you need to be aware just for that aware. So, if we give them a more uh, clearer picture about just be because if they read a pamphlet and that mentions a side effect, it does not mean that it will happen in them. but again it is subjective some people you know if they understand all this they they do some people uh, don't yes, so imanchi what do you follow there in abu dhabi any uh... that you confessed oh, uh, in the first life yeah so you know, i have already earned a medal in that so, uh, of and <laughs> what about dr raju uh, what do you do in nepal and all how are the uh, issues concerning such patients how do you deal with them there Uh, like uh, we do not uh, have like uh, the questionnaire beforehand 
Uh, and if the patient like uh, again, uh, it's uh, Dr. Himans who told like it's not we are not asking them and they are not telling us. Okay. So I think uh, the way forward would be like uh, the uh, I think we need to be have an questionnaire and then that will help us to uh, so that they they will share their problem and that becomes easier for us to manage. So from now onwards, I think we need to have a questionnaire built so that we can uh, at least the patient will willingly come out with their problems at least in questionnaire and that becomes easier for us not that easy but we try anyway would any man would uh, like to compromise on their sexual function and then uh, take a medicine i mean because seizure is of course a paroxysmal event and they do not have any idea about what is happening to them Otherwise, you should show the seizures to them and say that this is what is happening to you. And um, there's a slight chance of having uh, going on into a sexual dysfunction. Otherwise, I think especially men, I don't know whether females, but they are not going to take a sexual dysfunction and um, going to take a medicine which is going to cause it. So it's a difficult problem actually because this case is ongoing. I thought I'll share it with all of you and get your ideas as well. Yes, Adam. Anmut, yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any data on hemispherotomy patients with sexual dysfunction? I did not find any data. Uh, Maybe I am not sure, but I don't think probably it will take more five for that entire group to. No, it was not. No, no, no. Yes, Sujit. What do you want to say? Your friend is here, Dimancho. Good evening. I saw uh, that all data about temporal lobe epilepsy in this one, so it came to my mind. What about the hemispherotomy? And. Uh, one of my patients had, a, at the age of 11 years, had a hemispherotomy. Now, for 15 years, and has developed very significant hypersexuality. That's the question. Hyper, okay. Hyper, Hyper. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think this is like a like a cluer busy phenotype because the contralateral hemisphere also must be having this dysfunction. So uh, there is a functional amygdalo hippocampectomy happened, and then that has led. Okay, one question uh, to all the panelists and ma'am. How much dose can we say is required to have that hyper hypersexuality? Any of of a of anti seizure drugs? Any particular dose is there for which can cause? Yeah, I'm an ustad only in this valve right now because that case is ongoing. Yeah. And uh, there is no evidence to say that it is dose related. So if you ask me if it's idiosyncratic, that also there is no answer. So this is something which has uh, not been dealt upon by many of the researchers. So I can comment only on Vanfrit. I'm not uh, aware of the other ones because I've not read about it. Is it dose related, all three speakers or anyone? Because yes. like we say for uh, women with epilepsy, Childbearing age group have an effect on the See, Adam, people are only bothered about women with epilepsy. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is what we, actually... We have to start something afresh about men with epilepsy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really planning to start that. I post only male counterparts there. So you can ask any stupid, rubbish, pornographic question there. Fair me at least. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or... Uh, Purnima Manchu, is it dose related? So, uh, I there are no it. like uh, literature which mentions it's a dose related. So, there are no literature. And then uh, the only thing is like uh, in most of the patients, well controlled seizures with single drug, the sexual dysfunctions are very less. So it's not like all patients are going to develop hypersexuality. So majority of the patients well controlled on drugs, single drugs, and then, uh, so these patients, uh, despite using any of these, uh, even like um, the enzyme inducers, they do not develop, they probably do not develop uh, the, the hyposexuality. And various studies also, again, some of the studies, they say that hyposexuality is not so common as by, as been described in literature. And because these patients, there was a selection bias of the studies. 
and uh, most of them are because the refractory epilepsy cases have been studied on the sexual dysfunction and patients with temporal lobe epilepsy and the patients on multiple drugs and so that's why the the in the literature the cases the hyposexual uh, dysfunction is uh, so much uh, reported uh, so uh, that's the so you think it's not related to dose i didn't find anything about valproate regarding other drugs i have no clue and uh, as far as this, uh, sexual dysfunction anything from a very lesser degree to a major in western countries for them um, their sexual life is as important as their driving license or whatever uh, ramesh is smiling but i know that because i've been there for a few years now but in india it's just the opposite like adam said the partner is chup all the time she'll keep quiet um, and um, so i do not know whether there is a disparity uh, in the statistics that we uh, laid out we have to have more and more studies from india and people have to come out in the open you think in a remote village in up or uh, in bihar a person with epilepsy is going to come out and say that he has loss of libido and lack of penile pubescence and all he will not be knowing what exactly what degree it has to be so uh, but in west it's not like that they have they are very very i mean they want to be sexually active you, have, you can see 80 or 90 year old uh, female um, keeping this uh, what do you call uh, what is it ramesha the ovarian uh, ovarian hormone secreting some device inside the vagina and uh, i was wondering when i was in uk for two three weeks what is this old lady going to do but that is how the things work there um so it's very different actually and we don't have any data we have of course two or three articles and someone has to review it so i don't think it is dose related and uh, whether it's completely reversible also i have no idea because this man thinking that it's valproate induced to end up years he's on levitrus at time he's having on and off seizures uh, also but um ramesh you remember this uh, fellow he is that ifr textiles man um pr sir's favorite patient uh -huh. but uh, unfortunately you have given the certificate saying that he is fit enough to get married i never knew that there is a marriage fitness certificate also this is uh, the fellow uh, everybody knows anyway that's okay that thing will wrap up madam or ramesha dr ramesha uh, final comments and final summary by dr ramesha okay i think uh, sexual dysfunction is uh, uh, grossly under uh, represented or under uh, uh, answered in the, our clinical practice it is mainly because of the lack of time and the shyness from the uh, from doctor side as well as the uh, shyness from the patients and caregiver and uh, partner side as well so there is a scope to improve our clinical practice uh, if possible i think it is possible maybe we can routinely ask one or two questions uh, once a year and as before starting the medicine uh, in such situation uh, from our epilepsy side per, uh, per se we can use more of a newer drugs compared to older drugs that in way we are doing now and we can consider a liberal referral to the psychology psychiatry and endocrinology in the hope of improving their uh, uh, overall quality of life so i think a uh, very nice summary by dr ramesha and i think uh, very nicely presented and a very good job done by all the speakers i mean i thank dr raju padel from nepal dr punima from calicut and himanshu from abu dhabi and thanks a lot ma'am uh for the a very unique and a different topic usually we we actually hesitate and we don't discuss in our practice and seminars are also pretty much less on such topics so at least everybody is in uh, in enlightened in terms of a new topic and we have gained something new and hope so to we we'll continue this practice in our clinical practice okay. thank you everyone and a very good night thank you so and much and i think last line by dr rajesh ayer more of the stories <laughs> don't issue a certificate what 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 
Don't oh. give your certificate. <laughs> Don't give. <laughs> I think. <laughs> see, oh, only because it's Ramesha, I mentioned his name because he will take it in the right spirit. That's no, but I think way. we have to ah. be careful medical legally. Yeah, you are right. We have to be careful. The moral of the story is not to issue any certificate. See, I have seen many many situations where when there is a divorce, they come and tell that you know you be married because doctor you said she can marry. Okay, but the, very often the divorce is not because of this kind of issues. They are more because of some other. mal adjustment between the uh, families between the family is not between the husband and wife so uh, i think generally we should not issue any kind of certificate if there is anything give a verbal certificate that okay if you want you can marry not a written certificate <laughs> In a busy clinic, he would have probably asked if only if I show this. And Ramesh, I know is a very soft-hearted, very gentle person, so um, it is well taken. In a busy clinic, he would have asked, "I want to get married, but the girl wants to see the certificate." Okay, but certificate yeah. is over. And those days, Sunita was there to issue any certificate. You tell her any formal certificate will come out. <laughs> Even today, that's not different. So Ramesh is not at fault. No, no, but. Issue, um, See this certificate thing. I really see. You can marry. That is not for us to tell. No patient is otherwise physically fit to marry. Now he has got seizures. Agreed. That doesn't mean he cannot marry. Yeah, he has written only so, he can get married. Um, see, we have not checked his sperm counts. We have not checked his ED. So we don't know. So we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so. so But one last thing, let me say, it was the court is uh, uh, where I go is an Etimanu, where my husband's uh, family is. Etimanu, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. So my uh, father-in-law comes with me, uh, just for a moral support or whatever it is. He takes me in a car actually, and then the uh, I was asked to define what is erection, what is ejaculation, what is penetration. Oh. I, I never had a reeling uh, my whole life. hearing any questions but um, to define all these things is very difficult those uh, judges are i think do i think you are you should put a you should file a case and against and if you see the movie pink man as uh, women <laughs> harassment i know no in the court it is not possible so um, then you see the movie pink pink it's a good movie god. which one pink oh pink i see yeah. <laughs> amita bachchan's drama Yeah. Now the whole nation is against Amitabh Bachchan Adam. So I am with Kankana only. So leave Amitabh Bachchan. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor Amitabh. Manchu. From now on, you are the superhero. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye, man.